Now let's differentiate a function that is a root function with a complex expression inside. Good. So, wow, this looks like a composite function with uh, more than two layers. Let's try to look at layer by layer. So right inside, we have to look usually easier to find the inner function. And there it is, the angle of that sign. So this is the most inner function, a linear function, 13x. The next layer, or the one function outside, will be sine of that 13x, a trigonometric function. But in this case, there is another layer outside, which is that root, the square root of the whole expression. So to differentiate this, we would need to differentiate the red one, the root, the purple one, the sine, and the orange one, the linear. It's not looking that easy, actually, because that root function almost causes a, a problem. So maybe we could rewrite it in a different way. So we basically have sine of 13x, all of that inside the square root. But what is a square root? It's the same as a power. What power is that? To the power of a half. Exponent 1, index of the root 2. So this way maybe will help uh, it look easier. Inner function, 13x. Second function around it, sine of that. Third function around it, power function. So this way the expression looks a little bit less complex. So the derivative of y with respect to x will be the derivative of the red power. So a power is simply something to the power of a half. We know the half will move to the front. So we're going to have half multiplied by that whole base to the power of, we need to take one from the exponent. So we know that here on the side, if we need to do half take away one, in this case, the one will be conveniently written as two over two. So one minus two halves, negative half, or any other way you want to think that. So let's put that exponent here. Recapping, to differentiate the outer function, the red one, we move the half to the front to multiply the full expression and take away one from that power. But that whole expression inside must remain exactly the same, sine of 13x. Now we have to multiply by the second layer, the purple one. So derivative of sine of something will be cosine of that same something, 13x. And then we have to multiply this by the derivative of the very inner function, which is just a linear function, 13x. So the derivative of that is 13. This is our answer, but of course, we need to rewrite it in a simpler way. So always remembering to look for, because it's all multiplication, look for the numbers and multiply them together. So we have 13 halves. We can leave it like that as a fraction. Then probably I'll write the cosine 13x at the front, just because I think it's simpler. And then I'll write sine of 13x all to the power of negative half. So this could be our answer, but of course, if we want, we can try and simplify it a tiny bit by um, using the indices rules. So what does that mean? Well, let's have a look again here. We could do 13 halves cosine of 13x. And because we have a negative exponent, we could send that whole expression to the bottom. So we would write it under here. So the sine 13x would go on the bottom and the exponent would be positive one half. But what do we know about exponent one half? Same as square root. 
So that could be our final answer. We could even tidy it up a bit more. 13 cosine of 13x all over the square, oops, 2 outside the square root, 2 sine of 13x inside.